Hello and welcome to this week's Act of Worship on the theme of identity. We thought it was really important to talk to you about this theme because as people have spent a lot of time at home during lockdown, maybe you've had a bit more time to reflect on who you are and who you want to be. Many people's identity is so wrapped up in what we do in life. A few weeks ago, I would have been happy to say, I am Mrs. Lacey and I am a teacher. A lot of you probably claimed your identity through being a, a student at Blue Coat or at Emmanuel. And that's okay, but actually that's what we do. It's not who we are. And so this act of worship today is going to lead you into a thought process of who God thinks you are. God does not create rubbish. And so you are special, you are unique, you are wonderful creations of God. And we hope that if you don't realise that, you will realise it by the time this act of worship has finished. Lord, figuring out who we are and what we're here for is the biggest of life's challenges. Help us to look in the right places for the answers, to focus on loving those we know and those we've never met. Thank you for your promises about our identity, that you made us, that you know us inside out, and that you'll never leave us. Amen. more patient or how to be more patient and how to be quite a bit more organized juggling four children two toddlers and two near teenagers and uh, my job my work the teaching and organizing with that it's been quite difficult One, I've learned that I don't naturally wake up at 6 30 in the morning it's now a lot later than that I've learned that um, I'm definitely not a very good barber I mean you better ask my son about that um, I've learned that Teaching your own children is very different to teaching other people's children. Teaching you guys is a lot easier. I've learned that running 10K is nowhere near as enjoyable as playing netball, and I can't wait until we're allowed to play again. I use the Headspace app, um, and since lockdown, it's really given me a chance to put some of these ideas into practice. So um, I've really learned to be more present in the moment, so not worrying about the past or what could happen in the future. I think I've learned uh, a lot since being in lockdown and I think God has taught me lots of things, in particular trying to uh, learn to be more patient, uh, particularly with my children. But it's also reminded me of the many blessings that I have in my life. My house, my garden, the sunshine, friends, family, and not to take them for granted. What I've learned from this lockdown period is pretty simple actually. What I've learned is to slow down a little bit and appreciate things around us because actually we never know what's around During the lockdown I think I've learned that perhaps my um, patience isn't quite as good as I thought it was but it's made me love and miss my friends and my family even more. So the ways on which I've grown other than my waistline is that I've been able to learn a new language, been uh, learning Spanish. Um, I've started cycling again which I absolutely love. Um, I've found out I'm a bit addicted to online shopping, a bit of a problem, but I've started being a lot more creative with my time and made loads of different things. This lockdown has made me realise I need to dedicate more time each week to speaking to my parents and my grandparents. I live almost three and a half hours away from each of them and I've not seen them now since Christmas. And I really need to make sure that I keep up ringing them every single week and sending them letters in the post in order to make sure I keep up my family bonds. I have learned that I actually enjoy going for a walk. I have learned how to make a really good TikTok. I have learned that actually I need people. I need to be able to interact with people face to face and I've really missed that. I've learned how much I value normality, really. Uh, how much I enjoy uh, my job uh, and teaching young people, how much I value my friends and family and, and seeing those on a regular basis, how much I value my children being able to go to school, I value having a weekend because uh, I've sort of lost, lost, lost track of days at the moment. Uh, so yeah, I value normality uh, and I can't wait to get back to that sometime soon.
My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You are not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth from the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but I am the complex expression of love and it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could. My thoughts towards you are countless as the sun on the seashore and I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you, for you are my treasured possession. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well. My name is Rihanna, I'm on the Trent Youth Team at Trent Vineyard Church and I've just had a few thoughts for you guys today on the theme of identity. Now to kick us off, I have a quick question. I wonder how you see yourself in three words. I hope they'd be really positive words. Hope you know how amazing you are, how loved you are. But I can definitely be guilty, and I don't know about you, that actually even if a hundred people say some really nice things about us, it only takes one negative comment to destroy our self-esteem. To stop believing lies that we're not good enough, we're not smart enough, we're not cool enough. That actually we have to prove ourselves to make friends, and actually we have to earn someone's love. But I want to encourage you today to listen to the voice of the person who knows and loves you best. Because they're the people who have our back, the people we can trust, who know us inside and out, sometimes better than we know ourselves, and that those words need to have the most value. For me, I'd say that person is actually God, that actually I'm a child of this amazing God who created the entire universe, yet he knows me inside and out. He created me intricately. And I know it's actually really hard to forget some of the words that have been spoken over us that aren't, that aren't true, that are lies, because they start to cling to us, it's hard to shake them off. But actually, it's so important to remember the truth that's already been spoken to over us. And actually, we need to try and stop listening to the other voices that try and tell us otherwise. I don't just listen to the words that God says about me because they're nice, but because he created me. He knows me inside and out. He knew me before even my parents knew of my existence. I want to say to you today that you are not a mistake. Before you were created, he planned you perfectly. Every atom, every molecule, every cell of your being, God selected you, he handpicked you, you were known from the start. He can count every hair on your head, every freckle on your skin, everything on the outside, but most importantly, he knows what is within. He understands your feelings, your thinking, the depths of your heart. In lockdown, sometimes I don't even know how to feel, but I know that God knows what I'm going through. Maybe you feel like you can't actually describe how you're feeling to someone else that they might not understand. But I want to encourage you and remind you that God knows exactly what you're facing. He knows how you're feeling. You can't hide from his love. There's no limit to his grace. He set you free so that you can live in the certainty that God chose you, God knows you, and God loves you. His love for you is vast because you are his masterpiece and he is your creator. He loved you so much that he couldn't just make you and then watch you over earth. He had to know you one-on-one. -on -one. He wanted a relationship with you. And so actually, if 
we really believe what God says about us, it's going to change everything because we don't need to listen to the lies of what other people tell us anymore. Because we know God's love, we know that he knows and so therefore his words need to have the most value. In Genesis 1, God looked on Adam and Eve and he said, and it was good. So maybe there's a part of yourself that you're like, I really don't like this about myself, but God looks at you individually, he says, and it was good. He really loves what he made. And so I want to encourage you that in lockdown in this really hard time when we can start to question who we are, we can't prove ourselves in the same way. I was meant to be having a, a lifetime trip away on my gap year this year. And I can't do that. I can't post the pictures on my Instagram or I can't do these things that actually I was gonna do. And I know that's super hard, but for me, I'm remembering exactly who God told me I was and I'm clinging onto them hard, even when it feels like I can't. Maybe you were head of a sports team and you can't do that anymore. Everything we used to say as part of our personality or we used to explain ourselves to others or introduce ourselves, we can't do it in the same way. But for me, I'm holding on to God's words. So I hope that encourages you today. Hi everyone, I just want to share with you an idea of how you may want to respond to all you've heard on the theme of identity in this act of worship. There are things that we find it really easy to believe about ourselves, but there's also things that we can find really hard to believe. 
We're told that it takes 40 days to change the way that we think, just like it takes 40 days to change a habit. I want to encourage you, those things that you wish you believed about yourself but find really difficult, why don't you try and commit to changing that thinking over the next 40 days? All you need to do is write down your own I am statement. Maybe it's I am beautiful. Maybe it's I am wonderfully made. Maybe it's I'm loved, I'm strong. Whatever it is for you, write it down and commit to every morning getting up and saying it about yourself. You will see as you continue to do that day after day that it will be easier to believe it about yourself. Here's some students from across the Archway Trust sharing what they believe their I am statements are for them. I am a great dancer. Woohoo! I am loved, I am strong and I am a child of God. I am happy, I am loved, I am strong. I'm funny, what do you call a donkey with three legs? A wonky. I'm able, I'm loved and I'm saved. I'm an amazing footballer. I'm courageous, I'm faithful and I'm loved. Let us pray. Dear Father, may we learn to live defined by who we are in Christ, your blessed, beautiful, cherished, joy-filled, adopted children, sons and daughters of the living God. And Lord, let that knowledge um, that we are your sons and daughters, let it mould us, uh, our character and our decisions um, every day. In Jesus' name, Amen.